Kartana, Tapu Koko, Porygon2, and Gigalith, and Rachel and Nan's team of L Tapu Lele, Driftblim, Buzzwall, Nihiligo, Arcanine, and Snorlax. I don't know what I would do if I was Rachel here. <laughs> <laughs> That's an but, honest assessment. Um, obviously, try and get the the you, with the Drift Blim, it gives you nice options against, especially leading with the Tapu Koko. You can guarantee that psychic terrain up straight away mm. if the Tapu Koko comes in. As well as the the Cartana is quite threatening to a lot of things on on Rachel's side of the field. The Tapu Lele, um, the Nihiligo, if she decides to bring it, the Snorlax. But with the Drift Blim, we know she's got the Will-O-Wisp. Yes. She can threaten that. Um, the Will-O-Wisp as well would threaten the Gigalith as well. And you know, even getting it on something like Porygon 2, it isn't a bad option to just chip it down every turn. Any damage. Sand. Any yeah. damage is great. I think Drift Blim Tapu Lele is a safe lead to go for the first game because she's very comfortable with that lead. She doesn't need Tailwind. Like, no. that's one of the things. Um, she doesn't need it at all. The Unburden boost due to the Psychic Seed and the Psychic Terrain will make Drift Blim faster than Tapu Koko anyway, so she can start putting some damage around where she needs to. Uh, Tailwind does not, not factor in at all here. She doesn't need it. But it'll be interesting to see what Lucas goes for. Tapu Koko is going to be a key factor here to threaten those faster Pokemon on, um, on, Lucas's, uh, on Rachel's side of the field and also deal with that buzz. Well, we see the handshakes coming out from everyone here. We are just about to go into this final at the Pokemon 2017 Birmingham Regional Championships. Lucas Muller of Germany, Rachel Anand of the UK, and we are so excited. Can't wait. And one little pre-thought I've had is Rachel against Trick Room teams I'm just going to take that back because she's led off with the buzz wall straight away with those Ultra Beasts and the Nihiligo. Hey, Lucas has also made the assessment of, oh god, buzz wall is going to be huge here. How do I stop that super effective damage? We see the Tapu Koko and the Arcanine coming out from uh, Lucas, and we see the uh, Nihiligo and the buzz wall coming out from Rachel's side of the field. Yeah, now... Lucas has put himself in a really nice position, getting that Intimidate straight away onto the buzz wall, um, neutering that big attack that it can uh, that it take advantage of. It's got the poison jab that threatens the Tapu Koko, but Tapu Koko does outspeed it and can pivot out of this situation with the Volt Switch um, and, and get something else in place of that. Um, then the Arcanine on Lucas' side of the field has to be careful. It's obviously threatened very heavily by that Nihiligo and those mm. power gems that it can throw out. Yeah, that is very true. The Nihiligo in a, in a position where it can either target the, the Tapu Koko, but you expect a Volt Switch here into that Buzz Wall, most likely. Buzz Wall will not want to stay on the field, so whatever comes into that slot can expect some damage, especially by Electric Terrain boosted um, Electric Terrain boosted Volt Switches. We can see the Snorlax coming in, which is, which is a nice option. It does have a higher special defense stat. It is going to be able to soak up a little bit of that damage. Nihiligo is going to protect itself here, not looking to get any damage off onto the Arcanine or onto the Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is going for that Volt Switch into the Nihiligo, actually, which is not what I would have expected. But the will o -Wisp coming out from uh, Lucas's Arcanine is going to put in some nice work against the Snorlax. Yeah, catching the Snorlax there with that burn, and that's really, really putting Lucas in a really good position straight away. Snorlax to get back up to the attack stat it, uh, it was before the burn is going to have to get two curses up and that's going to take a lot of resource especially with what Lucas has on the field if he's got the Cartana in the back he can bring that in and straight away threaten the Snorlax and the Nihiligo with those fighting type attacks that we've seen in previous rounds. Tapu Koko again is freed now just to go for a Volt Switch into that Snorlax not really having to fear about any protect on that slot and just reposition himself protect the Arcanine possibly here or even switch it out. Yeah, exactly. Volt Switch being such an important part of Lucas's strategy just to get the board control going in his favor. He can, um, he is going to switch out that Arcanine as you mentioned Lee. Porygon 2 coming in now so this could be a uh, a sign of what Lucas is planning to do with the Pokemon in the back. We see the download boost. It's going to give it an attack rise. Um, and the Volt Switch is going to go into that into that Nihiligo now. It hasn't. It did protect last turn, so it can't protect again. Life Orb damage going onto that Tapu Koko, but more importantly, the, the chance to pivot. Yeah, and what we're going to see come in, maybe the Gigalith, if, if Lucas has brought it. Mm. Um, it'd be interesting to see what his last Pokemon is, but Ooh. it is that Cartana. Yes. Really nice switch there, Lucas, into the Cartana, putting instant pressure onto the Snorlax and the Nihiligo, threatening chaos on both Pokemon. Yeah, a nice bit of damage from that Power Gem from Nihiligo there, and the curse has been set up on Snorlax, so it will get an attack and defense boost, but with a Sacred Sword on uh, Cartana, and also that Phytinium Z that we've seen Lucas use fairly often Snorlax is really heavily threatened yeah and has Rachel brought the Arcanine that's the question mm. Mm. Um, if she's got it in the back now's a really good time to bring it in get that Intimidate onto the Cartana 
bolster those Snorlax defenses a bit more with that curse boost and potentially try and get another curse up really. Um, as soon as you get that Arcanine in, if you have brought it, then you are putting a lot of pressure on that Cortana to, to either switch out or protect because, you know, those big fire type attacks aren't what Cortana wants to take. Arcanine is coming in now. The Intimidate will drop onto that Kartana, taking it down to minus one attack stat. Also, Porygon 2 going down to neutral due to the download boost it received. Porygon 2 is leaving the field. Arcanine coming back in. It is going to lower the, um, the Snorlax's attack stat back to neutral, and Arcanine going down to minus one here. So, really nice switch in option for Lucas there. Um, the Snorlax is actually going to drop out as well now, um, bringing back in the Buzzwall, which doesn't take too much damage from any of the attacks that um, Kartana can use, but Substitute here is a very, very nice option. Really nice play there from Lucas, kind of he predicting that the Arcanine possibly coming in on that slot and taking advantage of that free room to get that Substitute up whilst the Arcanine comes in. Now, yes. the Arcanine doesn't threaten the KO and Kartana is threatening, um, possibly. By Team Z, all are pummeling onto that Arcanine slot just yep. to get some damage onto it. Once that's out the way, makes it a lot easier for Cartana on Lucas' side of the field to to maneuver and operate. Yes, you can under, you can imagine that it might be a double up going onto that Arcanine slot just to clear that side of the field um, and make sure that Lucas is in a nice position here. And he's played these Cartanas so well whenever we've seen him on stream, really understanding the right time to set up that substitute and put himself in a nice position. He doesn't want to waste the substitute that he's got though, going for that detect to make sure that it sticks around for another turn in case Rachel maybe drops the Z-move onto it, or maybe the goes to the Flare Lips and then the Z-move. So the will o -Wisp coming out, it is going to go onto that Buzzwall, and that is such a good option for Lucas to neuter two of the really powerful physical threats on Rachel's side of the field. Buzzwall instead just goes for the Poison Jab into that Arcanine, it is burned, its attack will not be as strong as before, and it doesn't do that much damage. Not at all, not after that burn, and Lucas really taken a big lead in this game with the, the two Will-O-Wisps on two. What are Rachel's biggest physical attackers on her team? Um, really hampering what Buzzwall's ability is to do now. You know, as we said before, it was the biggest threat to that Porygon 2, that Gigalith. She hasn't, he hasn't brought the Gigalith, we haven't seen it. Um, but that Porygon 2 is going to be able to operate a lot easier now mm. when it comes back onto the field. And Cortana's still threatened. The Arcanine and the Buzzwall can double up into that slot and potentially take it down. So Lucas still has to be careful in that slot. Mm. Um, but the Arcanine on Lucas' side of the field is putting a lot of pressure onto the Buzzwall. Yeah. Um, so it'll, we'll see if, if Rachel reacts to that and tries to maybe try and get that Nihiligo back in. Cortana just going to go for a Leaf Blade here. Going to go into that Buzzwall slot. Doesn't do much damage at all. It is, it is resisted uh, because of the uh, bug typing on Buzzwall. Flare Blitz going to come out from Rachel's Arcanine. Going to break the substitute on that Cartana. Um, and it will definitely go down there. Loads and loads of damage, four times effective onto the Kartana. You imagine Buzz will probably want to go into this as well. Kartana is such a huge threat now. Uh, Flare Blitz from, uh, from Lucas' Arcanine gonna go onto that Buzzwall as well. How much damage will this do? Really high defense stat on Buzzwall, surviving just in the red. A lot of recall going onto the Arcanine as well, and here comes the Phytinium Z. So really prioritizing getting rid of that, Ar uh, that Kartana. Yeah, and I, I'd imagine even Burnt, this is probably enough to take that down, get rid of that. This is going to make freeing up that room for Nihiligo to come in. You know, Kartana was the biggest threat to it on Lucas' side of the field. Now that Kartana is gone, she has targeted into it, and the, the Nihiligo now can come back in and operate a lot freer than it was before. Oh, that's so much damage. Well, I mean, generally the animation makes it feel like so much damage. Yeah. I mean, I, I would not want to be facing down against a Boswell throwing out that many punches at me. And the little bit of chip damage again from the burn means that Boswell should Actually, no, it should survive the next burn as well, but you'd imagine it's going to get targeted down by the Arcanine next turn just to clear it from the field. But taking an early Pokemon advantage against against Lucas here, but she's got an uphill climb to make sure that she makes that advantage work for her. Yeah, that's it. And I think she took the opportunity when she had it with the Buzzwall there to, to get rid of the Cartana. She knows that the Buzzwall is threatened heavily by Lucas's Arcanine. It's obviously a prime target for that Flare Blitz, um, and it's burnt as well, so it's going to go down very soon next few turns if it stays on the field mm. and taking the, that, that advantage when she had it to get that all out and pummeling and she made it really worthwhile in taking down one of the bigger threats on Lucas's side of the field making it a lot easier for her to to try and get some momentum and build on that going into these next few turns.
Lucas has a lot of options going for him here. He could launch a, he could launch a Thunderbolt, but he chooses not to. He's actually just going to protect his, his Tapu Koko, just making sure that it doesn't take any unnecessary damage. Arcanine protecting itself as well. Rachel understanding that she's in a position where she's okay to lose her Buzzwall. But Flare Blitz goes into the Arcanine instead. Buzzwall being able to get a free Poison Jab here, but it's going to go into Tapu Koko. No damage dealt this turn. Boswell ticking down its health, but surviving. One more turn left on that burn counter. I think Rachel was just hoping that Boswell would be removed from the field so she could get a free switch in, but Luke, Lucas just denied her that. Yeah, I think Rachel was hoping for that so she could bring in the Nihiligo, um threaten both the Tapu Koko and the Arcanine. Um, but Lucas played that well, kind of burned the Protect on, on the Tapu Koko to match the, the Protect on the Arcanine and um, give himself this room now, like we're seeing. Really, really nice play for the double up there, Lee. Yeah, now he's going to bring in the, the, the Porygon 2 and keeping that, that type of Coco in the back till later on. Yep, really, really safe plays from Lucas, making sure that he puts the Pokemon that are the most most threatening in, in range for uh, attacks later on. We see the Porygon 2 hitting the field. Flare Blitz will come out. It was targeting down what used to be the Tapu Coco, now the Porygon 2, uh, taking it down to just below half HP. Arcanine knocking itself out in recoil. Buzzwall will go down this turn as well. So Buzzwall goes for the superpower. It's going to go into that Porygon. Oh, it's going to go into the Arcanine slot. Does a load of damage with a critical wow. hit. Wow. So the attack falling there. Uh, Buzzwall will get the beast boost, though, from knocking out the Arcanine but it will go down this turn. So yeah. two Pokemon lost for Rachel on this turn, but managing to get rid of that Arcanine in the process. Yeah, really nice play there, and I was really hoping that that superpower is into the, the Porygon 2 or predict there. That would have been huge, I think, but also taking down the Arcanine there. Um, and you know, she's got an Ilego to bring in uh, against the Porygon 2, which isn't going to be easy no. with that recovery option that it's got, but she still has that Snorlax there, and it's pretty healthy. Yes, it's pretty healthy. It's still got its berry intact. It is burned though, so its, um, its damage output is a little lackluster. Does have the opportunity to boost, but I feel that like she just needs to start throwing out some high levels powers. Yeah, I think so. Um, I think on Lucas's end, uh, Tap Coco probably is going to protect here, so it may be worth doubling into the Porygon 2, um, but at the same time, you kind of need to get rid of the Tapu Koko. It's the biggest threat at the minute. The electric terrain's up, and those electric type attacks with the Life Orb that we've seen are going to be doing big damage to to either target. If um, Lucas decides to target either one down, two Pokémon left on each side of the field. Lucas Muller and Rachel Anan playing for the first game here in the finals of the Birmingham Regional Championship. Porygon 2 does need to be dealt with here, and Snorlax in a position where it could throw out a return. Nihali could just double into it as well. I don't think Lucas is a person who would want to put his Tapu Koko in as much danger as, uh, as uh, just leaving it on the field to do. Nihaligo would not be able to be knocked out at this point, at this rage. So he does go for the Protect as we expected. Has Rachel gone for the double up here? So Nihaligo goes for the Protect itself, just making sure that it doesn't take any unnecessary damage. Snor uh, Ice Beam coming out from the Porygon 2 into that Nihaligo slot, and Snorlax using the opportunity to take the curse. Really nice play there from Rachel. Um, taking the that turn, taking the advantage there to get a curse up, just in case Porygon 2 goes for the Trick Room. I don't imagine that would have been a really a good option there with the Snorlax and the curse there, but you know she's taken that chance just to get some extra attack boost. A free turn to, to boost your attack yeah. and your defense, why not? And now that Tapu Koko protected last turn, the Nihili goes free to just sludge bomb into that slot, take yeah. down the Tapu Koko and one-on-one -on -one, Snorlax will probably be able to beat the, the Porygon 2 because yep. of that curse. So Tapu Koko gonna throw out a Thunderbolt here. It's gonna go into that Nihiligo. It's not gonna pick up the knockout due to the massive special defense stat the Nihiligo has. It's gonna throw out a Sludge Bomb onto that Tapu Koko, removing it from the field. And that is one Pokemon left on Lucas's side of the field. Do you imagine that Porygon 2 will go for a Protect here? Uh, sorry, not Protect, sorry, a Recover? Possibly, yeah. Or maybe just an Ice Beam into that Nihiligo to, to make sure make it, it goes one down. Make it one-on-one. Yeah, yeah. so one-on-one -on -one now. Nihiligo goes down here, so Lucas has his Porygon 2 in a position where it's facing down against this now twice boosted Snorlax. So Snorlax at neutral attack now. Yeah. But two stages of increased defense. It looks like Lucas's Porygon 2 is mostly relying on special attacks. We could be seeing a chance to uh, see some more freezes coming out from Lucas's Porygon 2. No, it's but the Snorlax is burnt. Oh, well, of course so it is. Yeah, of course it is. That's yeah. the thing with, with Lucas using the Will-O-Wisp and utilizing the Will-O-Wisp. You can't toxic it like you would normally put a counter on it and you can't freeze it now. So Rachel is literally sitting quite happy pressing that curse button yep. until she feels fit to throw out those big returns and just clear the field in a couple of turns. 
So a nice amount of damage on the critical hit there. It does activate the berry. I was going to suggest that she just keeps going for curses until the, the berry activates, then recycle once, and then she's got some damage out. Mm. She's got the she's got the um, the curse going up again now. So she her Snorlax mm -hmm. is at plus one. Um, we are going to see um, the attack increasing once again, and Snorlax in a position where it can now start to really focus on getting its berry back and then cursing up again or just keep cursing and getting his berry back and then throwing out the damage onto the Porygon too. Yeah, that's it. And I think that's just what Rachel will do. Um, but hopefully for Lucas on his end, he'll be using this time to think about the next game. Mm -hmm. um, he had a really solid game plan. He, he knew how to focus down against that Buzzwall. The switch in from the Snorlax um, early in that game, taking that burn, has cost him here. Yeah. Uh, the Ice Beam will go onto that Snorlax once again. Another critical hit. Uh, Snorlax going for the Recycle now, which will boost its HP all, most of the way back up to, to full, just a little bit under full here. Um, and Rachel probably will just go uh, go on the offensive after getting another couple of curses up. Yeah, I would imagine so. She maybe just go for one more and then start throwing down those returns. Um, there isn't a lot Lucas can do. As I say, though, he might want to use his time to think about how he's going to set up for the next game. Like you say, he had a really good game plan. He got a bit unfortunate with that switching um, and that critical hit that took down the Arcanine earlier in the game. But other than that, um, I think it was more about protecting the Cartana. Um, he got yeah. into a nice position with that su behind the substitute, um, but then it, it was in a position where there was an Arcanine and a Buzzwall out in the field, and he didn't have enough resource to get rid of that Buzzwall. Like we said at the start of the game, that Buzzwall is the pretty much the biggest threat to him and him carrying out his game plan yes. to, to take a game. So whether he'll reevaluate that and think of different board positions, how he can kind of set up this situation where he can get rid of it a lot easier or not. Um, I'm sure he will be using this time, but all credit to Rachel there. Played oh, it very well. Yes, yes. I mean, that's the thing. We've said this before about Rachel. Sometimes the situation calls for her to just make the smart plays, and I think that's one of the things that she did. She knew that Snorlax had the options in the back. If she managed to uh, get rid of the threats to it, Cartana removed from the field. Once she got rid of that Tapu Koko of Nihiligo, that's when things were like, okay, Snorlax is, yeah. Snorlax is here. You've got nothing to do against it, yeah. and you, you burnt it. And it doesn't matter because I can just curse. I don't need to worry about the freeze or the poison anymore. Mm. I, I'm free just to curse up and recycle as much as I want until I can have enough behind me to get rid of rid of the Porygon 2 in that situation. And I think that's um, also a really nice uh, option from Lucas just to, to forfeit that game and not waste any more time because with the option of Snorlax and Porygon 2, there could be another end game situation like that and they do take some time. If you're going up into a game three scenario and that happens, you want to have as much time available to you as, as possible to make sure that you're in the best position to win the game. Yeah, like I was saying, I, I, I imagine he was probably thinking about what he was going to do in that game too, but he probably used that time, decided, yeah, I've got what I'm going to do now, and yeah. then decided at that point, there's no point of carrying on, let's get into it, let's execute this next plan so speaking of getting into it we are going into game two right now lucas miller left hand side of your screen arcanine gastrodon kartana tapu coco porygon 2 and gigalith and on rachel and Anne's side of the field we have the tapu lele driftblim nihiligo buzzwall arcanine and snorlax lee if you're lucas are there adjustments that you make pokemon wise or just playing wise i think you You've got to bring the Arcanine and the Tapu Koko. They're going to be instrumental in, in dealing with that Buzzwall. They're the best answers Lucas has got on his side of the field. Um, bringing those, though, does throw up other problems. If, if Rachel, like we saw, brings that Nihiligo, mm. then you, you need a check for that. Um, yes. Which Gastrodon may, may not be a bad answer to. Um, it depends what move it's got, what, if it's what item it's holding but it could potentially have some sort of ground type attack. Yep. The water type attack is going to be good. Um, it's a pretty good defensive Pokemon as well. It can take a lot of attacks. It's got recovery as well. So that might be an option. It's a nice switch in again to stuff like Arcanine, um, but you've got to be careful with it. Here we go, guys. We are just going into game two of the finals here at the Pokemon 2017 Birmingham Regional Championships. Rachel and Anne, one up against Lucas Muller of Germany. Tapu Lele and Arcanine on her side of the field. Tapu Coco Arcanine for Lucas Muller. Classic leads here. Yes, yes. We Classic see some leads. One really popular lead and then another really popular lead with yes. the Lele. We're going to see Rachel get her psychic terrain up, um, which will give her that psychic type boost on, on all those psychic type attacks that we can throw out instantly putting a lot of pressure on 
both the, the Tapu Koko and the Arcanine, but then depending on the speed of uh, Lucas's Arcanine, you know, we know it is slower than the Lele, so yes. the, the double up into that slot isn't isn't really as safe an option as if the the Arcanine on Lucas's side of the field was faster. Yeah. yeah. Um, Lucas has to be aware of, of a big psychic coming into that slot. I would expect probably a Volt Switch from the, the Tapu Koko, but if you can catch it on a Protect on either side, on Rachel's side, and then hit it with either target, the Arcanine or the Lele, and get some damage onto it early, it's going to give you a good advantage going into the, the next few turns. Speaking of Volt Switch, here we go. Lucas is going to put some damage onto that Tapu Lele Life Orb boost, taking it just above half HP. More importantly, getting that opportunity to assess the ball position and bring in a new Pokemon here. But Tapu Lele in a position where it can throw out some massive damage to whatever comes in. Uh, Porygon 2 will be the, the, the option here. And this is something that we've seen Lucas do a lot, just trying to soak up as much damage with that Porygon 2 as it holds the Eevee Light. Its defenses are boosted. Psychic is going to go into that slot now. Porygon 2 taking a fair amount of damage just above half HP. Tapu Lele with his Life Orb boost doing a lot of work. Flare Blitz coming out from the Arcanine on Rachel's side of the field. Targeting down the opposing Arcanine there, getting a nice little bit of chip damage, a little bit of recall taken, but a little bit of damage onto uh, Lucas's Arcanine is always nice. And the double up onto the Tapu Lele from Lucas's side of the field, it's going to do some nice damage, but not enough to knock out. Yeah, putting it in range of extreme speed though. Um, and, you know, Lucas has the option in the back to bring that Tapu Koko in, get the electric terrain up so he can utilize those extreme speeds as well. Um, but Lucas is sitting in a nice position. He's not really, you know, he's got to be careful with that Porygon too because it can potentially be doubled into. Um, but he can use that to his advantage, um, switch something in potentially that he's got in the back into the Psychic and potentially a Flare Blitz and then get rid of the Tapu Lele and that's one big threat on Rachel's team gone. Yeah, you'd imagine that he would want to bring the Tapu Koko in here just to be able to eliminate the Tapu Lele or have the option to force it out in a switch. Mm. Um, Arcanine, might want, Arcanine on Rachel's side might want to target that slot Tapu Lele is going to leave the field though, uh, switching out before any of uh, Malukas' Pokemon. Night Eligo making an appearance now. Arcanine switches instead of the Porygon 2. Uh, oh, sorry, on Rachel's side of the field, that makes more sense. Buzzwall coming in, a double switch. Rachel pulling out all the stops here. Porygon 2 coming back from uh, Lucas' side of the field, bringing Gigalith. So that's not a Pokemon that we saw in the last game. So an adjustment made from Lucas here and setting up the sand, getting that special defense boost, which could come in handy against Night Eligo. And Arcanine on his side of the field protecting, but. Nothing to protect against, so it fails. Yeah, everyone else switching around the Arcanine there. Um, Rachel putting herself in a really nice position, threatening a KO on pretty much both things on Lucas's side of the field. Nihiligo with the Power Gem onto the Arcanine, and then the Buzzwall with that all-out pummeling oh, onto the Gigalith. A lot of damage coming uh, Lucas's way next turn. Yeah, and it's it's hard because what's he got to switch in on? It, it, you don't want to bring the Tapu Koko in. It's not the, the most bulky Pokemon. Porygon 2 has already taken 50% damage from that Psychic the previous turn, so it's not wanna, it, you're not going to want to switch that in on anything that Buzzwell is going to throw out. And even the Power Gem from the Nihiligo, it's going to do good damage as well, so it's a really difficult situation for Lucas here. Let's see how it plays out as Tapu Koko comes in on the Arcanine slot now, overwriting the Psychic terrain and setting up the electric terrain, but will it be around to utilize it after this turn? We see the Gigalith going for a Protect, making sure that it could survive this all-out pummeling should it come out from the Buzzwell. Nihil Ego going for that safe power gem into the Arcanine slot. Gonna do some nice damage to Tapu Koko. It's not enough to pick up the knockout with 29 HP, and here it comes. That massive all-out pummeling smashing its way into that Gigalith slot. And it's still gonna do decent damage, even though it is into the Protect. You know, Lucas making a safe play there, expecting this move and trying to just preserve the Gigalith. Um, and I imagine trying to get the Arcanine in the next few turns to get an Intimidate onto it. This is so much damage. Look at this. Look at this for a Protect. That is an incredible amount of damage, especially on such a defensive Pokemon like Gigalith. Uh, Tapu Koko in now, which is really nice to be able to threaten that Buzzwall a little bit, uh, but really needs to be careful with how he how he positions here because if Rachel switches out that Buzzwall uh, into like the Tapu Lele just to just to sack it, uh, then Nihiligo could pick up a knockout onto um, onto the Tapu Koko. But obviously Gigalith has shown it has Earthquake as well. That's something that Rachel might need to consider here. Yeah, I think so. Um, but the Buzzwall does threaten with the KO onto that Gigalith with the superpower. 
Um, the Nihiligo is also getting that special defensive boost thanks to the Gigalith bringing the sand because of its rock typing. Mm. So it's not going to take as much damage from that type of Coco. So again, it's free to just really go for a power gem maybe into that slot expecting either the Porygon 2 or that Arcanine to come in on there. And you know, if the Arcanine does come in for the Intimidate, it will go down and it's putting Rachel in a really dominating position. The, the double switch really, really paying dividends for Rachel and Anand here. And Lucas Muller is going to go for his own switch, Volt Switch. It's going to allow him to uh, get a lot of damage onto that Boswell using Electric Terrain. It's Tapu Koko surviving on 6 HP, being able to sit in the back for later on, but more importantly, being able to survive this turn. And Lucas thinking about what he wants to bring in now. You'd imagine it's going to be, yeah, that Arcanine just to get an Intimidate onto the Boswell once again and threaten it with a, no threaten it with a, uh, with a knockout with Flare Blitz. But we have to see if... Uh, Rachel read into this and went for the power gem into that slot. Boswell at minus one attack now due to the intimidate. Power gem coming out, it goes into the Tapu, the Tapu Coco slot and Arcanine goes down. And getting that beast boost more yes. importantly as well and that's absolutely amazing for Rachel, putting her in a really, really good position. Probably enough now to be able to take down that Porygon 2 with a single attack and we see that super power, is it enough after the yes. intimidate? And it is, and the Gigalith Huge goes down. damage. Boswell picking up Picking up a defense drop, but more importantly, the KO. The Beast Boost will make its attack drop neutral now, so Boswell still in a good attacking position, and Lucas, it's, it's sliding away. It's sliding away from him, unfortunately. It is, and there was a critical hit there on the superpower. I don't know if that would have made too much difference after the yes. Intimidate. If that, if that would have been enough, if Lucas knew his calculations and things and how he trained the Gigalith and might have been able to survive and then get that Earthquake off, which would have made such a huge difference. But unfortunately, Rachel got the, got the roll there, got the critical hit, and it was enough to take it down. And now it doesn't look like Lucas has got really m many options to, to, to pull this game back. Um, Pokemon numbers are 4-2 to two at the minute. Fantastic play from Rachel and Anand. A fantastic play from Lucas to try and get himself into positions that will work for him, but that double switch paying so much dividends. We said it before, and it needs to be said. Like she did it in the previous game as well. Like a double switch to just kind of just turn the tables on her opponent. Mm. And this is she's been playing amazing this whole tournament. Protect coming out from Nile Ego now. Uh, it's not going to take any unnecessary damage. It doesn't need to. Dazzling Gleam will pick up the knockout onto Boswell here. So Rachel able to get a free switch now. But more importantly, Tapu Coco will go down to Life Orb and Sand this turn. Yeah, and then we're three on one. Um, Porygon 2 may go for a recover here, um, but it's not looking too good for Lucas at the minute. Like you say, he did try to make the best of a bad situation by switching in that Arcanine to get the Intimidate on the buzz wall to try and get that potential Earthquake off with the Gigalith. And I think if he'd managed to do that, the game would be a lot different now. We mm. wouldn't have the, the Nihiligo. Um, well, we'd still have the Nihiligo, it might be down to its Sash, but you know, you've got that type of Coco to come in and it outspeeds it and it's easy and an easy KO for it. So now we've got the Tapu Lele and the Nihiligo that do. No no recover coming out from that Progon 2 either. So it will be a forfeit coming out from Lucas Muller and Rachel Anand will be taking this game. You, it's gonna, there it is, there's that forfeit. Fantastic game from both competitors here. But Rachel Anand winning the Birmingham Regional Championship here what an amazing performance. Just incredible, yeah. She knew, her get, she knew her win conditions and she just played to them. And so incredible, yeah. so, so great. And I think like, this is one of the things we've said before, she loves this team, she's used this team. Lucas had a team that was fairly more standard, so she knew what she needed to do. Mm. He lost to her.